Should we go on? Should we? Oh, there it is. Oh, all right. Be yeah, Avondale. Hey, Brian. Hi, Brian. Tina just sent me something. What is this? <laughs> it's a chubby cat. <laughs> There's a kitty in the cabinet. Right, <laughs> Timmy got a job. He likes it. <laughs> he likes his job. Hey, Tim, if you're there. He's not there. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. What's happening? I wonder if Brian's still there. Oh, he's nice still there. Pigtails. I had to put it in pigtails to keep it off my neck. Those are these are called dog ears. Pigtails are when they're braided. Are you? Looking I didn't know that. I didn't know there you were technical that? terms. Yes. Dog ears. I don't know. Got my trusty ice pack. Something it's been an interesting. Uh, Interesting week. I would ask to you to check the temperature, but you won't read it right anyway. <laughs> Let me see. We're not we're not technically going yet. Right? It is six o'clock. Uh, so it's ninety on the nose out outside. Inside it is eighty. I would, guess, I would guess it'd be around eighty-five. I'm not touching that. I'll probably mess it up. We got room in the spaceship. Hey, Bill and Yvonne. Hi. Hi, Bill and Yvonne. Got a very short, yeah, very short sprinkle today. I think that was it. It threatened. Hi, Eric. It looked, it looked pretty nasty, but oh, no, we're we're fixed. <laughs> for the moment. Yeah. Only Until for the next the one. We're fixed. Until the uh, next time. Let's see. CJ got us the next day? Yeah. The yeah. next day? Yeah. Yeah, CJ got to us the next day. Another ramp, but uh, he didn't put this one out into the out into the wash as much. So I don't know. It'll still happen, but Thursday night looks like yeah, it's looking like it's supposed to rain tomorrow night. We Let's got see. a little bit of rain. We got like a two minute a sprinkle really yesterday. Short. Oh, when, yesterday? Well, when you were outside, when oh, Brian right. was outside trying yeah. to do something and. That's when a little black cloud came over and I, uh, dropped a load. Up. So <laughs> I, uh, we got mulch yesterday because our, you know, uh, would it have been this past week? You, whatever one, whatever day it was when the, when the road got kind of washed out. So we'll, we'll start. We're 602. So yeah, we had a storm this past week. Oh, hey, uh, we've Taylor had, Phillips we've had and decent, Melissa. Oh, it's Melissa. Yeah, they changed the name of the channel. Back to Taylor Phillips. Um, oh. So let's see. So we've had, you know, a few days of rain over the past few weeks, uh, a few decent rains. Um, but uh, what was, I don't remember what day the one was that really kind of messed up, messed us up a little bit. I don't know. So a couple of days ago. anybody who's familiar with our it's past different. stuff, you know, we had kind of a dirt ramp coming down into the wash from a previous storm Might have been Monday. and it lasted, that was since last year, September, October, something like that. Um, but it got wiped out. So we had about a three, three and a half foot, wall that we couldn't drive out of so cj came over and he hit that but uh our temperature is supposed to drop over the weekend as well oh yeah that's yeah. what i heard and it's supposed to it rain more but your temp oh i thought <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see that you are it's so kinda blur uh, everything's kind of blurry so uh let's see so we got he 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 dug us kind of a new ramp out the next day. We haven't taken the car out because it's still a little, it's still a little rough and the road's still a little rough, yeah, but we've taken the truck some, out a couple of times. There's some bad places. I don't know if you, uh, Bill and Yvonne, if you've noticed, but it's uh, right across from Matt and Lily's house. There's like a big crack opening up. There's on, a couple of spots on the roads that look like they're one rain away from being impassable. So that's a little scary. Um, 54 but in a 64. Yeah. Can you really not see that? Oh my that, gosh. Yeah, it's blurry. Perhaps you should have some glasses on. 
Uh, I'm gonna look like bubbles. I on, saw that it gets real narrow too. Bubbles yeah, on trailer it's like park. so. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, wow, that's funny. Um, <laughs> Decent. If anybody's seen Trailer done. Park Boys, that's pretty good. Um, hey, uh, that's oh Rob. Oh my gosh, I just turned Rob brilliant there. red. Uh, boy, that was funny. Hi, Rob. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple spots. Yeah, there's a couple spots where it gets real you can narrow. make it through, but the edges are. Oof, yeah, there's a spot on Saban where about if half it, the road looks like it's about to go. I mean, if it did happen, it would. They would just have to come and fix it, just like they do the I others. Guess so, Timmy, <laughs> is Tim doing this on purpose? Tim texts. I'm dying. Wow. Oh, he says he, wow. Uh, he's a. Uh, Tim, you're allowed to write in the chat, you know? <laughs> yeah, why don't you get on? The, oh, he's watching it on his TV. That's oh, why. I see. Anyway. Thanks, Tim. Um, so, anyway, that's been going on, of course. So, okay, so let's let's talk about what's been going on. So, obviously, the weather's been going on. So, we, yeah, we got. We've had a few decent storms. Um, so, because of that, obviously, so if anybody saw the video yesterday, we have done some bail stuff, but we haven't put any out. It just seems a little silly. You know, it's not even possible, I mean, really. I, Every time we even well, think about doing anything, it's. Uh, hey, mom. Hey, Charlie. Um, yeah, we barely even get enough to put a couple out there, and I've been doing a lot of prep work. You know, I I sized a couple of bales for that section I want to start in. I built a little box beam section for that section I want to start in. So, I mean, I've been doing a lot of stuff to get ready for that, but you know, you needed a day or two to kind of go out there to feel comfortable putting something out there before it gets poured on. So, um, so I just haven't felt comfortable doing it yet, but, uh, with all the rain that we've been getting, you know, we did kind of shift gears, you know, of course, so no surprise, our water line broke, you know, multiple times in these storms. So, oh, you know, it got as we've said, we've switched over to the RV tank, which has been nice it and got jacked up that does time. protect us a little bit. But yeah, again, the last one really kind of broke it open and you got to put it back together. Um, I have put it broke in two places, by the way, it broke where we cross over. And it also fell out of our wall again. So I had to put it back together in two places. I'm getting better at putting it back together. But uh, we did decide that because of the way that last one happened, and it even made it hard. <laughs> <laughs> it made it hard to uh, to uh, get them back together in time to kind of fill up our tank again, or at least it was just a little annoying. Oh, hey, um, David. Hey, David. And Tim. Tim's officially um, on, the, on so, the screen now. Uh, Timmy Jack. Let's see. So we have decided for a short break here, we're going to kind of uh, shift our focus over to the water stuff again. So so I have actually purchased some pieces to do at least a, an intermediate step of, uh, of getting hooked up to, to the storage tanks here. So I think I've kind of said it in some of the, I think I said it in the description of the video and maybe in the, in the description for this live. But uh, I've got the pieces and I've got a little pump to uh, transfer water from the storage tank to our RV freshwater tank. So essentially the same the same idea as what we're doing right now with the well, but obviously not from the well, from our storage tank instead. So we'll just be moving water from there into our RV freshwater tank, and then we'll use the pump inside here to pressurize everything. So um, I, have the, I have the plumbing pieces to do that. I might be putting that together maybe tomorrow. Um, and then of course the step after that would be to add a pressure tank and a set of filters. So, um, but we just decided to kind of, to count on, even to count on that, uh, wash the, 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 the well water line, even to count on it for a couple of days is, is kind of asking too much with the way the storms are coming down and everything. So, so we've kind of transitioned or we're going to transition there very soon. And because we're going to be pulling water out of that, um, storage tank, we decided to also, kind of go back to the gutters that we didn't really do on the on the carport. So we've got almost a thousand square feet of roof out here that isn't catching anything. And we've gotten a good maybe two know, and three, a half three inches. inches or so roughly, you know, I suppose, and in, in a in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So um so we I I actually bought just yesterday, I bought some gutter material. Um I don't have the after I do the gutter, the gutter part is actually gonna be pretty easy, I think, just along the one edge of the carport. But then I'm going to switch after I come out of the gutter. I'm going to go to PVC to transfer it to the into the tank. So I haven't bought the PVC pieces yet. But but uh, anyway, we're going to take a little break here from from the, the house maybe, and uh, and try a and get break? our water. Yeah, as if we weren't already taking a break. 
but uh, we're going to try and get our water squared away a little better. So hopefully we can take care of that. Um, well, we can't really, we can't really do anything. Anyway it's just a little too much. I mean, I know I said we'll cover up and I still feel like we can still try and put some stuff out there and cover it up, but it's, it's a little scary when they're when the storms are coming often and pretty heavy <laughs> to throw something out there. <laughs> so. I'm the one. I'm the one with my lines is always in the gutter. <laughs> so anyway, that's some of the stuff we've been working on. Uh, as I said, I did a little mulch yesterday. You know, surprisingly, these last couple storms, I guess it was the one non bale gutter question for Brian. What is your funniest Pam's laugh story? Oh boy! <laughs> oh my to god! Buzz your hair off again. Sorry. Yes. I know. I yeah. Know. Well, it's too sticky. the problem is the heat, the, the humidity, the humidity, humidity makes it tough to get out and get a haircut. If I, if I were to get a haircut, it would just, it would just want to stick right to my face probably. So we've been avoiding a haircut, even though I need one. I'm way overdue. I'm going to have to uh, like put on my bathing wow. suit and cut his hair and then immediately get in the shower because I'll just have hair stuck all over yeah. me. Uh, it's disgusting. Funniest Ham's laugh story. Um, That's a toughie. There's there's so many, but specifically about your laugh. Well, my or my laughing just, has gotten me in trouble a lot of times, like laughing when I wasn't supposed to be laughing. Almost always, probably. almost always inappropriately. I, always inappropriately. Hey, hey. Nikki. it's Nikki Stern. It's Nikki Stern. Um. I don't know that I can. Maybe nail a Nikki story can come up with it. Nikki knows oh, a lot gosh. of uh, stories. Nikki's been involved in a bunch of them. <laughs> Nikki's uh, all, Nikki knows all my. There's so deep, many. The darkest secrets from the backyard confession. What did we used to call it? Backyard confession. Yeah. Confessions. Uh, so let's see. Um, you know what we should do is next time we'll come you in know what you with. You know what you should do? We'll come up with a list of ones, and then um, the next time, like next week, we'll come in Pam's with got them. a great laugh. When was it most inappropriate? Wow. Maybe in wow. church. <laughs> in my well, mom's church. Well, we all wanted to laugh my in church that time. That was that was funny. <laughs> Wait, it was New Year's Eve. Um, <laughs> that would be a whole lot. What, what did he say? Oh. <laughs> Nikki. Yeah. Tell, tell your mom's uh, yeah, tell oh, New it Year's was Eve story. When, my mom wanted me, she always wanted me to go to church with her and it was New Year's Eve and we went to church with my mom to pray in the new year. And, this is in Oklahoma. And uh, it was a Pentecostal church and there were just people running. I mean, it was just running everywhere. And I was, tr I was trying not to laugh, but it was, it was they funny. Were, they were having a great they time. They were speaking in tongues. They were, <laughs> yeah, it was... It was a. He had never witnessed that, and I was brought was some, up. And we were there for was hours, up. hours, <laughs> quite a while. It was, but, it was something. So when I was younger, when I was a little kid, my mom used to smack me in the head because I, if I laughed, but it didn't stop us. We we always laugh. <laughs> anyway, that was just that's just one. But. That's just one. Feel free to pick a four. Uh oh. Oh. I can't. Oh. I sleep horribly. Do I need to get out my squirt bottle? <laughs> Don't. I am soaking wet with sweat uh, at all times. Back to sweating. Okay, so yeah, the uh, so the mulch. You know, I've talked about our mulch a bunch, and I still think it's awesome. But we did finally, you know, one of these last storms. I guess maybe the one that kind of blew our road out there. Um, it actually moved around quite a bit of our mulch. It kind of slid a little bit. So some, not surprisingly, a little bit of kind of mud came down off the mountain and kind of leaked into the, <laughs> into the mulch. That's not too surprising. Those are just little spots, but the whole mulch has kind of shifted and some of it has kind of sheeted off. So I have to kind of remulch several areas out here. So that's, that's unfortunate, but I still think mulch is a great answer out here. What did I miss? You're soaking in it. <laughs> Martin Christmas party. Oof. Well, that's. Oh, I was crying. Again, I was not laughing at that. We have a million funny stories. They're not. I can't think of one that's specific to Pam's laugh and its inappropriateness. But there's a million stories of Pam being inappropriate in various ways. Um, you're so keen to imagine. Uh, how <laughs> far it. are you on the build? Have, I try uh, to have do a magic, stacking bales? magic trick. So build. <laughs> um, I've not stacked bales. So I we just put out a video yesterday that I cut bale. You know, well, you saw it. You you put a comment on it, Bill. But um, yeah, so I've cut enough bales. You know, the section we're going to start. We're going to work in sections, as we said, between the between the bucks, just because that makes sense. Um, 
So uh, I have the bales for our first section, which isn't even a full bale wide. It's the smallest section. It'll be the easiest to cover over with a tarp after we get it up and everything. But um, but uh, it just it just keeps raining all the time. So uh, it's rained a so lot. So I, I haven't. I did actually put a little. I put a little uh, mesh down under that section, a little wire mesh, a little quarter inch wire mesh to hopefully keep some critters out. Um, I moved some some uh, some of my braces because the braces I had them kind of on the on the bale side of the buck, with, and so when you go to stack the bales, those will get in the way. So I moved them kind of to the other side of the buck. Um, so I was doing that one day, kind of prepping and and split some bales apart, and then we just got more rain coming. So. So as hard as we were getting hit with the rain, we just said, you know what, let's just deal with this water situation. You know, the, the water line, even only using it every three days or whatever to fill up our tank, even that is difficult because of the way it breaks so much. And um, but so, the, uh, so we're going to uh, shift gears a little a bit question. for a short time. The prices did go down on. <clears throat> and oh, yeah. I wanted to talk we, about that. Yeah, yeah, we took it. Yeah. He took some stuff back because they wouldn't. So I don't know. I don't know if everybody out there knows this. Anybody who's buying wood or doing anything, um, I think I don't think it was on. I can't remember if it was in our live last week or it might have been in Jim's live the next night. Somebody you know said I, I think it might have been Warren, who's often on these, but he hasn't been down here in a while. I think he's on the road a bunch right now. But um, he said you know prices are going down, and people have said that a few times. And I always thought, well, you know, maybe futures are going down, but it'll be a while before we see it at the stores or whatever. So I think after that live, and again, I think it might've been Jim's on Thursday night, which is tomorrow, but um, I went and I Googled, or I'm not Googled, but I went to, you know, Lowe's and Home Depot online and I looked up, I looked up two by fours first and they were, I don't know, maybe 80 cents less or something. They were less, still outrageously priced compared to, you know, back in the day when they were two bucks or so or whatever. But uh, so they were, they were, instead of eight something, they were seven something. And I was like, oh, well, that's nice. But then I looked up plywood and I had bought... I had bought three eighths inch plywood for a piece of our, uh, for our uh, box beam that we're going to put kind of a sheeting on the bottom of the box beam to pull them down on the bales. And, uh, you know, I had paid, you know, I had bought our plywood about our wood about two weeks before that, about two weeks ago. And, um, I think I paid for the plywood and I kind of, I was going to get, I was probably going to get half inch plywood and it was like, I don't know, 80 some dollars or something. And I think I still paid like 50 or so, 40, maybe 46, 47 uh, for a piece of three eighths inch plywood. And I went on to Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, and it was 23. It was like half the price. So, um, so it is happening in case anybody didn't know, the prices are coming down. It was for whatever reason, it was huge on the, on the plywood. It was, Fairly minor on the on the uh, two by fours. Richard. So I call up. Hi, Richard. I call up uh, Lowe's, and I say, "Hey, you know, I just bought wood about two weeks ago. I haven't even used it yet. Here's what it was. Here was the price. You've cut the price in half, and it, actually, all the prices of everything I bought was lower. But it was the plywood that was big. And I said, you know, can you give me a credit or anything? I said, I said, I don't want to have to return this stuff, but I said I'll return it if I have to. And she said, give me a minute. And she talked to some manager or something. And she said, she said, here's what we're doing. <laughs> she said, they're telling me you have to bring it back, they want return to make it, it difficult, and so. rebuy it. And I said, I said, seriously. And she even felt bad about it. She said, I'm sorry, I have to do this, but that's what they're telling me I have to do. They so I said, I said, do I, have, I, do I even have to get it out of the truck? She said, nope, I just have to look at it. And yeah, I, I loaded it up in the truck. I took it all down there. She looked at the receipt. She gave the receipt to the cashier, said, do this all as a return. And then ring it up again, and that's what they did. So I saved like two hundred dollars just by driving down to Sierra Vista. So if anybody's wondering, prices are dropping. I thought um, I just thought of something. Yeah. An inappropriate time that I laughed <laughs> when the bug flew in your ear. Well, yeah, I was dying <laughs> when the bales fell on your head. Oh yeah. Well, how do we not remember that one? A bug flew in his ear. You've and seen I one of the like, inappropriate times. No. He was banging himself. I probably told that story. Some would say it was appropriate. Um, Richard Russ, hello. You know, oh, that's a new person. Richard, I think you might be right. You know, I've put so much mulch on our place, and you know, every time I come home with a with a truck full of mulch, I try and kind of make it cover as much as I can, right? So sometimes I think I go a little too thin with it. I think if I go thicker, and so actually, this last set of mulch, I actually laid it on pretty thick for that reason. I think you're right. I think if you put it on thick, it'll do definitely do better for um, sure. 
So um, the bugs, I freak out about bugs because my my brother, if my brother's ever watching this, he traumatized me. Every let's see, I can't. Dead <laughs> <Damn> joke. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, it would have been nice. This particular one was Lowe's, and uh, it would have been nice if they had just credited me, but they did not. Um, it was a pain, but I think we got two hundred dollars back. Yeah, we did. It was totally worth it, but it was a bummer that they wouldn't just credit, but they didn't. And he spent a lot of time in Ace, and we were back at Lowe's again, yeah, trying to get the, all the gutter stuff. We got the gutter stuff at Lowe's I this think time. There's, there's a video coming on. Uh, I got a video. The next one will have a lot editing. to do with water. Let's say, right? Yeah. I think, yeah. So I got a lot of footage um, I'm going through right now. Uh, so yeah, I spent well over an hour in Lowe's, or I'm sorry, Ace, <laughs> trying to figure out how to go from. You know the the outlet of my storage tank oh, that's your dad to Nguyen. become hey dad Nguyen, um to get to be the right size for the inlet of the pump that I have, which is basically just a garden hose connection. Um, Didn't you have a whole team? So of there, yeah. Oh, I had three people in Ace, <laughs> and now there was one little wrinkle that made it a little harder. I think was that basically when I come out of that uh, storage tank. In the future, I want it to go to an inch and a half PVC, which is what I'll probably run into the house. So I want it, whatever I did, I wanted to be able to kind of back off in the future, take apart to get back to that one and a half inch PVC. So I'm laughing at Brian. Wood Sorry, refund but... equals more great base. Because <laughs> <laughs> that stuff was terrible. Wait, we uh, we don't cook in here very often because oh, no, it's wait. so hot. The great value spaghetti is fine. It's it was the, the sauce. Kro it was like Kroger's sauce. Kroger's or whatever. sauce. It was the it's other Kroger. sauce. Great. We actually used Great Value, and it was great. Yeah, Great Value but, is Great uh, Value. Yeah, it was Kroger, I think. I think we bought it at Safeway or something. I can't remember. Fries. Fries. Really? Yeah, Kroger's. Anyway, terrible. No bueno. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, if you're buying plywood, I, I hope it doesn't go back up because we're going to need a bunch of plywood for the roof of the house. So If it goes uh, that. It does. I mean, literally half the price. So it was a big deal. And hopefully two by fours continue to come down. But uh, like I said, it was, it was a little less than a buck. They came down. Still something, but not as big as the plywood. The plywood was big. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about that. I forgot about that. That happened, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right after last week's live, I believe. Like I said, I think somebody brought it up on, on gyms, and I looked it up, and I was shocked at the difference. Um, I yeah. checked Home Depot too. Home Depot's and, and Lowe's prices are generally the same. Um, strangely, you know, Home Depot's two by fours were less. And I actually asked Lowe's if they would match Home Depot's price, and they said it's different lumber. They wouldn't match the price. They said it's different lumber. I was like, wow. Um, did you make a decision about putting bug rats in the room? I did not make a final decision, although I did. Oh, we because... saw a snake the other day oh, we did. come out yes. from under it. Well, actually or go no, in. it was it going in it. And then he saw the snake. So then when yeah. I went out there and I was just kind of looking around to see if I could see it, and a kangaroo rat came hopping out. It looks like a little tiny kangaroo. So here's here's what happened. And he had uh, and it was it was sprinkling. He was running. It looked like it might the rain might pick up. So what happened was I went outside to shut off the generator because I thought it was gonna rain harder. <laughs> so I went outside to shut off the generator. I was in flip flops. And I shut off the generator, or I at least I killed the fuel, which is how we shut off our generator. We, we I killed the fuel line, so it kind of sputtered. It, it takes a minute, and then it sputters out. Um, so while I wait for that, it was raining, so I went under the uh, carport, which is just a few feet away from the generator. So I'm standing under the carport, and I'm looking around. I think I was looking at the bales, and I think I was thinking about bales for some reason. I was in deep in thought. And uh, by the time I realized it, there was a snake literally like a foot from me on the ground. Um, I didn't get a great look at it because I kind of freaked out and it, it shot under the bales, it was a which the bales are on, uh, pallets. So it went under a pallet. I think it was <clears> one <throat> of those gopher snakes. I don't those think it was a rattler. Fast. I'm pretty sure it was not a rattler. Every time but, I've uh, encountered I didn't a get rattlesnake, a great look at it. they, well, the one just sat there and then one rattled at me. So I told Pam that a snake went under and she went outside to look 
And apparently she saw a kangaroo rat come out of that same area. So it might have chased. Yeah, he was might chased something butt. out of there. That wouldn't surprise me. So <laughs> he was hopping. So yeah, no surprise that there are critters under there. But I still think if we're if as long as we're careful when we take those down, I think stuff will just kind of go, had a, go he had away. A terrified look on his face. <laughs> So I think the snake was in there. I hope it didn't eat his family. Oh, but anyway, I'm sorry. I, I didn't think, finish. I think when you're home, you homestead, you have to be able to pivot, especially during the months. Yes. Um, and, oh, as for bugs so in your ears, your hair is not long enough. Not too short. Um, too so back to David's question, okay. which is where we got sidetracked. Um, uh, I did put down. So I haven't made a decision about the whole thing. But because I had it laying around, I had a little bit laying around. It was quarter inch wire mesh. Um, and I had it, I had used it in the past, I think for a sifter. Um, and I had a little bit left over and it just happened to be enough to fit the little section. Like I said, the first section I'm going to do is just like 27 inches wide or something. And of course it's 15 inches deep for the, the bales. But uh, I had enough to cover that section. So I did. I tacked it down with, uh, with like roofing nails because they have a little bit of a bigger head. So it grabbed the, it was able to grab the mesh you know, so that it wouldn't slip over. So I did put a piece of mesh in that one spot, at least for a starter. And I, I think I probably will put it all the way around. Looking back, I wish I had actually done it before I even put the bucks on because I'm going to have to kind of put it in between a bunch of things, which is a little annoying now. I wish I had done it just over the whole thing at the start, but that's all right. But yeah, I think I will use it. And I did put a quarter inch uh, piece down uh, in that first place I'm going to start. And I, I just had that laying around in the shed, so I'll have to go get more to do the rest of it. But it won't take a lot, so I think it's get I think it's probably rats, worth it. Get a pot belly pig. Get rid of rat. Uh, best way to deal with snakes: get rid of rats, field mice. Get a pot belly pig. Size so of a medium Pigs are dog, amazing. And crate snakes. train it right outside your house. Interesting. Wow. Uh, popular pigs are amazing pets, and snakes hate them. I live in Snake Haven with three small kids, and got pig after finding three more snakes. Wow. Unfortunately, wow. we travel too much to, have, or uh, yeah. at least we used to. <laughs> I was going to ask, how do you think that would do in the weather? Our weather, you know, the heat and everything. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, we'd want it to be an outdoor animal. We got to get um, this house built. So I want to do it in the weather, so but far. yeah. But yeah, we do leave for quite a bit. You know, we love animals, but we also like to leave from time to time, and animals make that tough. So. Yeah. But that's interesting to know about pot belly pigs. We're still, I think our best bet is when we get a little chance to focus on it. I think if we build a nice owl box, I think I think an owl might be a great uh, rodent control Can we do that? device. Can we do that tomorrow? For us. <laughs> tomorrow, yeah. uh, you're working on gutter stuff, right? I think I'm going to put the, the plumbing on the front of the... Uh, Oh yeah, you the, bought all uh, that plumbing stuff. The uh, storage tank tomorrow, yeah. so that we can actually pump from the storage tank into the oh, into the RV yeah, tank. Yeah, because we fully expect that, that uh, other water line is probably going to get washed uh, out. Sure, again. it sounds like likely tomorrow night. It's likely to, to we're likely to lose it. So, Great. so yeah, that's probably the next thing I'll do. Then I will probably go to gutters after that. And like I said, I think putting the gutter on the on the uh, carport is. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. The bigger deal will be the transition, you know, to PVC and getting that PVC over to uh, to the actual lid of the uh, of the storage tank. That'll be the probably the hardest part of that job is getting the the PVC connection over to the to the lid. But uh, I think if we work on those things for the next few days or a week or so, uh, that'll be fine. Big rain's coming. It sounds like it sounds like we have rain coming tomorrow night, but you never know what to expect around here. But uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, so yeah, it'd be easier for us if we could transfer water from the oh, uh, storage hey, tank that we it's have. It's right my out cousin. Here. Hey, Darla. My cousin Darla. That's the heat wave. <laughs> um, it's been all right. Very muggy here. Which is it getting I better mean, with the rain? Actually. While it does, while it does it's cool happening, it. yeah. it's it's cooler, but then right. afterwards and the sun comes out, it's like a steam. So it happened steam today. Sauna. You know, it sprinkled five, ten minutes, yeah. literally. But I mean I literally it's more stood like one minute. I stood at the window and I watched we have a we have a thermometer. We have a thermometer on the kitchen window <laughs> outside. And uh, I watched it drop from ninety-five 
to 80 like something. 84 and I li I literally was counting off the degrees yeah. as it was dropping and then it went just back because of a little again. sprinkle and then it went right back up afterwards so um it is cooler though I mean we're not in hundreds right we're we're low 90s right now but but it gets hotter humidity, inside here inside, the humidity's rough inside this box it's very sticky it's very wet which wouldn't be new for you but it is a big deal to us it's that's really tough on us because thought, we don't get it very often I, when i visited darla i didn't think it was that humid at the time really it wasn't that bad but. i remember a lot of humidity from back east i mean but i guess it just depends on what's going on but they generally don't have the combination of temperature and humidity at the same time but i mean pennsylvania will have 90 and in high humidity or something like that but uh, for us, it's, yeah, when we get the high temperatures and the humidity, it's really bad. We went to the store yesterday and came home, and it was 100 degrees in here. Well, yeah, trail. when we left, our we batteries were, were still filling. It was sometime in the morning, and this was, we went to Sierra Vista, I think, right? Yeah, because we got March. Yeah. So we were gone for a little while, Close. but when we left, I couldn't turn the air conditioning on because the batteries weren't full yet, and I was wanting to get full. So we left and the air conditioning wasn't and on. We and we left the windows shut. We closed shut the windows. Well, it, in case it rained. Because of it could rain pretty much at any time right now, we don't like to leave the house with the windows open. So we closed the windows. And yeah, it was really hot when we got back. And, it, and then it took a long know, time. Yeah, we might have to... not really caught up until nighttime, really, back to a normal sort of temperature. That's so. when it's rough. That is, that's rough. That's when all my ice packs and my spray bottles. <laughs> we, went, we went into Benson today. And we did leave the windows open because we were close enough to home and we thought it was still uh, hot today. Oh it, my God. it didn't look like it was going to rain at least for a while. So we took a chance, but and we don't like to leave with the windows open or this time of year. The thermometer said 100 degrees outside today and it was 90 in here. Uh, was... Once house is done, you can bury mesh three to four feet around exterior, which at least moves snake entry exit holes away from foundation. I think that's probably we're going to end up putting mesh around the outside probably. Nothing nastier than hearing a rattle under wall or deck. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, be careful with debris. Oh, uh, yeah. Keep a very clean work site. Yeah, we try to keep clean, but yes. We're going to be very careful. The, uh, the, the bale area is tough out there. As you can see when we were doing the bales in the video, you know, because so we have this, the carport is kind of like three bays, right? Three good car sized bays. And uh, the uh, we have two of them filled with, with uh, bales. So that only leaves us if we want to work either under shade or out of the rain or the sun. Um, it only leaves us that one last bay, which we've got our, our, uh, our ATV in. And so, so we're a little tight on space to work out there right now if we don't want to be out in the open. So uh, until we pull a few bales down and start getting a few out into the house, uh, we don't have a lot of room. So and it will open up a little bit. When we we're going to have to be really careful when we take those out because I'm sure things, well, we know there's things living under there now. Did you um, ever consider, Hoghead Run 9 says, did you ever consider building with the wet dirt that they put in a long tube bag, Hyper Adobe? We were just talking about that today. I mean, we've considered, we, uh, you know, and I'm sure Bill would probably agree. I mean, a lot of us have considered other options, but, you know, you weigh each one and, and a different thing works for everybody, you know. Um, uh, well, we were talking about bag, the floor. Earth bags are cool. The, yeah, the oh, yeah. With yeah. the Hyper Adobe bags. Um, Earth bag is cool. There's a lot of cool uh, things. Uh, I think, I think I could be wrong, but I think technically what hyper Adobe is, I see he's put some question marks there. I yes. think hyper Adobe is technically kind of earth bag with a little bit of cement, I think in the oh. bags, but I could be wrong about that. Cement. Maybe Bill knows. I'm not sure if anybody can confirm that, but I think that's technically what hyper Adobe is. Um, but yeah, earth bags are cool and we considered it, but we chose, we chose, uh, uh, bales instead, but but that doesn't mean we won't use earth bag somewhere else or for, for other applications, but um, you should plant a tall growing tree like a black locust and put up an owl box if you want. I do, want, um, I do want to plant trees. So Richard Russ, if, if, uh, if you've seen some of our videos, if you've gotten a chance to see kind of the way our property is laid out, we have a nice little hill or mountain, depending on what you want to call it, kind of on our property or at least at the edge of our property. And we think that we've actually seen owls sit up on the hill. So we may put it up on a hill, but that's not a bad idea too. To go my, only, tree, but. my only worry about if we put it up there is that this mountain is very, very squishy. Like it's, it's a weird material. Oh, it's yeah. got a lot of uh, 
play in it. So David says before it's unloading the bales, walk around them and stomp on the ground. Yeah, make some noise. Oh yeah, whack we're them gonna take broom. sticks and uh, brooms. Yeah, I figured I would probably kind of run something underneath from a distance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I tend to think you know it's not like those snakes don't really want anything to do with us, really. So you just, I think usually it's are under it's there, about because oh, that's a perfect well, home for them. And rodent spring snakes, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we will be very careful. I'm I'm sure there are things under there, but usually you can kind of. I don't think it'll be too hard to kind of scare stuff out. And I think the more noise what? we make out there, the more what activity that? that we're doing out there, they'll they'll want to kind of move on. What I imagine. Snake? Can you read that bottom one? That's the one I just read. Oh, but he says at the end, uh, it would make a great video of him doing it, like beating on it with oh. the broom. Hoping at it was what the what the videotape <laughs> our our uh, our uh, rodent and snake clearing ritual when we uh, when we oh. get to the bales. That's gonna be scary. It'll be yeah yeah it'll it'll, it'll, it'll be, be yeah. fun. I I didn't think yeah, about it much. I mean, I always knew it was a possibility, but man, when I was out there in my flip flops. And I got kind of focused on something I wasn't really paying attention to around me, and that snake was pretty close. That was that was a little scary. You don't remember um, what colors it had? You didn't see any colors. I at mean, all? it was it was you know. Well, if it was a ribbon snake, ribbons have, have no, like, no. It was more diamondy. Oh, but oh. I but I don't believe it was a rattler. That was probably um, a gopher. Gopher snake. Pam, you say you want to plant trees. This is Brian. Maybe in your channel, show where you're thinking about and what kind. That's, you know. We, I'm thinking Desert Willow. I like Desert Willow. We, we need to pick some tree types. And now that, you know, for a long time while we were here, we, we weren't sure for a long time where we were going to do things, right? Which is why Pam would say we need to plant trees so that they can grow and all this stuff. But you obviously want to position trees based on your buildings and things. So... I didn't want to plant trees because we didn't know exactly how we were going to lay things out. Well, now that we know where things are going, we probably should think more about trees. Um, thanks, oh, Mom. Thanks. <laughs> it, click some thumbs up out there. Um, um, yeah, I want to. Really I've me. been wanting to. I've probably done this before. I can't thumbs up. <laughs> I've wanted to put plant some trees, and I did plant one Italian cypress, and, and it's not doing too well. So. Oh, yeah. Rattlesnake bites are trying to catch them or grab them. Yeah, we don't oh, ever do that. I definitely won't be doing that, that's for sure. We've probably um, seen four or five out here and in the we whole time don't bother, yeah. bother them and they don't I bother just, us. I try to pay attention to where they go and we make sure they kind of go off in another direction rather than under our trailer. But as long as they stay away from our trailer, we usually don't, don't really mess with them. Um, We've never had I'll get run on. Is your rain collection up and running? Not, not exactly, but we just talked about um, that is going to be one of the things. I got some gutter material just yesterday. So, um, so we're going to work on our our uh, storage tank, uh, transferring water from the storage tank to the RV. And because we're going to start taking water from the storage tank, we thought it would make sense to put some gutters on the, on the uh, carport to replenish that water. So we are going to spend some time on that, I think, over the next week or two here. So... Not up and running, but we're about to get on it. Uh, what else? I don't are know. You, there's not much going on. Are you trying uh, to say you haven't been milking any rattlers? <laughs> you like the venom? <laughs> we have not. I, no. I don't think Jim's on here right now, but Jim has, as some of you know, Jim's caught, caught a few rattlers in, in buckets and things. Water. Oh, um, yeah. That is true. Yeah, it is. Especially... Early on, you know, obviously we'll go for trees. We'll go for trees. Go for trees. We'll we'll try to get trees that are like hardy in terms of you know the desert that can desert handle. Desert willow can but handle drought. Even the ones that can handle that stuff don't usually, you know, when they're young, you still have to yeah, yeah. kind of baby them. So you have yeah. to give. So usually you have to spend a good year, I think, even on the kind of the the hardy trees. Critters. Usually you have to kind of baby them for a year. You have to give them a lot of water and stuff for a year. And then when they get a little better, you can, they can kind of do on their own much better. But, but yeah, for the first year, we'll probably have to really watch things close. So it is tough when you What leave. other non-dangerous critters? Non-dangerous? Well, I've I mean, we've rabbits. got mice for sure. I've seen we've little chipmunks. Jackrabbits. Squirrels. Rabbits. Uh, we've had a few on the property. I you saw know, a javelina once. Yeah, I've seen a javelina once or twice on the property. I've seen a deer once 
on the property. I I've saw a fox. I've seen a fox, I think twice maybe. A raccoon. Um, I saw a raccoon. I saw a coyote once. But I mean, all of these things, we know they're here all the time. We see their evidence. Jackrabbits. But, uh, but most of their activities at night. So we don't see them that often, but they're, they're around. Um, we see rabbits. We see stuff? mice. Um, snakes are skinning. They snakes cannot are skinning. see. That a means they're, will be they're quiet shedding when their they skin. Usually will rattle for, no oh, kidding. I didn't one know day that. I saw a skin of a snake out yeah. in a bush. With the rain, has your plumbing lines been uncovered? No, they have not. You know, I don't know if you saw the plumbing video, but, and I can't even remember. I don't think I did it in the plumbing video, but maybe I covered it later on or showed it later on. I actually just covered over the plumbing line, you know, because it's even, it's up a little high. If you, I don't want to explain the whole thing, but it'll, it basically has to, we have to raise the ground level a little bit in the future. But for now, you know, it was sitting kind of uncovered and I thought that was okay for a little while, but then, you know, the sun is just beating on it. So I did actually just mound some dirt over it and that dirt is still good. So it's really just to keep the sun off it. It's not really protecting it structurally at all, but uh, it keeps the sun off it and that has stayed there. I would um, like to have one of those you need a uh, night cam of your what do you evening call visitors, those? like a trail camera, cam or a, trail yeah, camera. Or a, I just don't know what they need as far as like power kind of and expensive. things like that. Or so, I guess that's really why I never used one. I think I keep saying Jim, but I, I think Jim had one at one point, but he he didn't deal with it for very long. I don't know if there's an issue with power or I, I just know. never knew how I would power it or and it's not something <laughs> I, I really want to spend money on so i'm sure if we had a camera outside at night we would catch all kinds of things uh all kinds of activity i know they're out there but um we will not animals. have Chickens, animals rabbits, goats. it's yes. unlikely because we like to travel um yeah that's tough so sorry we've Jennifer. talked in the beginning i thought i thought there was no way now i am somewhat interested by chickens but uh, it would Five be hard chickens. to like in having chickens potentially, uh, but I think it would be tough because we like to get away quite a bit. So that's that's tough. Yeah, it's even gonna be hard also, for us to just have a garden. But uh, animals are gonna be tough that, for us. Anything that requires like food and water and attention, yeah. we don't really, really yeah. we don't really want to have to deal with that. I have a friend that gives me eggs. Um, I yeah. I do I do stuff for her and she gives me eggs. Mary, her name's Mary. Uh, Rob says trail cams are battery powered. I don't know how much they cost. I'm sure they're all over the place for cost, but anyway, yeah, I just, I, I'm sure we would get a lot of activity. What are you going to use to pin the bales together? Rebar, bamboo, wood, plastic. I think we're gonna, you know, I don't I don't think I mentioned this on here or in a video. The same friend, it turns out, that, that pays Pam and eggs sometimes. Um, <laughs> they had some, I don't know if it's technically bamboo or not. It might be just a reed of some sort, but it's bamboo like. Oh, it looks like bam bamboo. Uh, we went over to their place and, you know, they just have it growing. And it turns out it was really dry at the time. Yeah. So it was all brown and kind of, which might not be an issue, but we took a couple of pieces of it and brought it back home here. It's not real sturdy. It's not real, uh, uh, let's say, uniform in size. So, uh, you know, we thought we might use that some, but I, I think we're just going to fall back to rebar. I think we're going to put rebar pinning inside. I think we're going to do kind of the staples at the corners. Um, I think we're just going to do it with rebar. Um, uh, pinning bales together, in a sense, we'll be using some wood too. Um, we'll be, we, we think we're going to be using what's called uh, vampire stakes, which Bill used to kind of um, attach the bales to the bucks which is a sort of a form of pinning the bales, not necessarily to each other, but to the bucks, but it should kind of tie everything together. Um, so. Um, the, uh, yeah, there's a lot of oh. homesteaders in Cochise County. Yeah. We do keep up with them. Do you keep up with them? Several of them we do, yes, yes. The ones we know about. I mean, the funny thing is, we know of quite a few, and that's just the people that are getting on YouTube, right? So, I mean, because that's the only ones we're exposed to, but I know I'm sure there's a bunch that more. They're not, um, or I we see them on couple, Instagram but, yeah. that I that I don't really, I, there are so many channels, I, I have a hard time keeping up with all of them. It is, yeah. But, yeah, we keep up with, I, I watch some of them. He really doesn't watch YouTube, uh, not YouTube a ton. videos as not much a ton. as I do, because... It's just very hard to keep, you know, watch all Do of the them. the scrap yard nearby. You might find some interesting items for cheap to pin bales. Hmm. A 
scrapyard? I actually don't like know. A dump? Uh, we no. have a dump that we go to. More a lot. almost like uh, what he's talking about. I think would be almost more like a like a junkyard even. Almost. Are you allowed to rummage through our dump, the dump where we go get mulch? I, I don't believe so. I that's don't think you're allowed that's to kind of a county. That's the county, or is it county or city? Sierra Vista. <laughs> um, thanks, by the way. For, oh, no problem. Thanks for asking. Um, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think. I don't know of a scrapyard. I, I just don't. It's not the kind of thing I look for. I, I'm not sure. Um, we have I'm a. Sure there's one in Tucson. I don't know what to call it, but um, there's a yard, like a county, like maintenance yard, like uh, that has it's between here and Benson that has a bunch of the uh, telephone poles and stuff in it. I've I've wondered in the past about asking them about any kind of telephone poles type stuff or anything if we ever wanted something like that. Um, but but I also know they they, they the are telephone? generally soaked in creosote, so they're not the kind of things you could use inside or anything. There's a guy that has telephone poles over by Dave and Julie. Yeah, he had some, which I don't know if he sells them. But yeah, again, part of the problem with those is they're generally not for indoor use. Right. So it just depends on what you wanted to do with them and stuff. But Maybe we could use them outside. Can you use them outside? Uh, sure. It'd be, it'd be a lot like you could use them for things, the same kinds of things you would use, like, like railroad, patio, railroad ties. Uh, patio uh, you could use them probably to, to build, to kind of... Uh, Hold back some some dirt. You could probably do some a little bit of damming. When we lived in um, Chandler, we, lived in Chandler, we had a, one little orange tree, but our watering system died, and the tree died along with it. We so we had a couple. We had some interesting issues in Chandler. You know, uh, the house we bought, we didn't know this at the time. There was a tree out front. It wasn't a fruit tree, but there was a tree out front. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the bigger one. I forgot the eucalyptus. orange tree was out front. It was a, big it was a eucalyptus. Tree. Okay. So yeah, anyway, no. when they planted it, when the house was built, I assume they probably did the front landscaping after they built the house right after. And uh, they put the family. watering mechanism, you know, kind of the drip system deal. They put it right up close to the root of the tree. And what we found out, so that tree fell over in a storm and it was wild. When, we, when it fell over, you could see the root of it literally just kind of spiraled straight down. So the roots... We, that's when we learned that you need to actually make the tree kind of reach for the water uh, because the roots never branched out. So it had no, it had no base to it really. So. But that little orange tree, we did have a little I, orange didn't, tree. I didn't know anything about trees, so I didn't water it enough and it died. And we had issues. Yeah. Shortly after we moved in, you know, it was a desert landscape pretty much at that place. You know, we didn't have grass or anything like that. So there was a watering system, but I mean, it had some leaks in it in places and I didn't want to dig stuff up and everything. And I hadn't put it in. So uh, shortly after we moved into that house, I think we just turned the watering system off. It was only for the front yard. It didn't do anything in the back. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we had a little orange tree that never really did much. And of course, Chandler is tough. Dry. Yeah, I mean that's some serious harsh condition. Hot, hot much, much dry. worse than here, even so. That was tough. It's hard um, to have any. I don't know how anyone keeps anything alive around here. Because... Will you have fruit trees? Well, we did have a little orange I've... tree, and when it froze, I we think... were gone, and yeah. it froze. While I think we it's were unlikely, gone. and again, it's sort of the same as the animal thing. You know, um, well. Not exactly like the animal thing, but e even if we were here, fruit trees take a lot of water here. And if we're really running on, you know, the water, the rainwater that we catch, that we would really have to expand to kind of our catchment. We would have to build some sort of rain roof specifically to catch more water, to water things. So I think it's unlikely that we'll go fruit trees. I think the trees that we do will want to be hardy, the trees that can tolerate drought and our weather here. Uh, they'll be more for shade uh, than they will for food. I, do I don't think it's likely that we'll do. We don't have saguaro cactuses. Apparently, saguaro do not. I assume it's the elevation. We're at about it's 30, too cold. We're we're approaching right. four thousand. We're a little under four thousand feet, but uh, there are no saguaros in the area, really. I don't think, right? So there's uh, other cactus, but not yeah. saguaro. It must be. We must be at an elevation. I assume it's the elevation that saguaros are not. They're just not around here. So, 
So we, we definitely do not have any on our land. We have some we barrel cactus. So our we have a lot of paddle cactus. We have some of the chain fruit stuff. We have some of the choya. I want to make one out of wood. We have a bunch of different ones, but no saguaro. Um, can you um, read those questions for us? Scrap yards are usually where people take aluminum and other metals to recycle. Guys who like to weld frequent them. So yeah, the oh, the one the Jim. thing I can think of. Hey, hey Jim. Jim. The thing that I can think of that's the closest to that would be the recycle. You know, it used to be recycled, but it's it's the transfer center, uh, uh, or the transfer station in Sierra Vista, which is where we go to get our mulch. But I don't know of that being like a scrap yard. It's more just you know uh, debris and stuff. It's more like uh, plant stuff. And uh, so if it is, if they do have scrap, I'm unaware of it. Um, they sell stuff for cash for slightly more than they paid for metal value. Sometimes you might find rat mesh there too. Old laugh from rat plaster mesh. teardowns. <laughs> uh, I personally like the Arizona ash. Great shade tree. Hmm. We, I'll admit, I haven't done a lot of research into trees. Again, when, when Pam was thinking trees early on, and I know it would have been nice to set some things up, but we did not know kind of our layout. And it does make sense to put trees in when you don't know where a building is going to be and stuff like that. So now that we have a layout, we probably should think more about that now. Um, yeah. You need to plant trees that do not need to be watered there. Like the New Mexico locust. That'd be, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Um, and I've heard desert willow doesn't take a lot of water. Eucalyptus. We used to have that. Um, and they didn't, it didn't take a lot, but uh, did you get our, all your gutters? Jim, we got our, we got our gutter material. The, specifically the gutter, but after basically, I'm not going to run the gutter beyond kind of, uh, what do I say, where, where it comes, you know, I'm going to have gutter on the edge of the roof, but as soon as it drops out of there, I'm going to go right to PVC. He's doing so nice. I didn't get the PVC parts yet to go from the bottom of the gutter over to the, uh, to the lid. It's a starter gutter. The, Is it a starter gutter? <laughs> no, it's not, why would it be a starter gutter? What does that mean? Well, that means that it's, only uh you're only going to put one and then you're going to add more later no Are, you're not adding it's the whole later. gutter oh of right. the for the carport it's just when i come out of it i'm not going to use the traditional gutter downspout type i'm going to go as soon as it drops down out of that gutter it's going to go right into and i bought the transition piece to go from gutter to pvc i just didn't buy the pvc pieces to run uh over to the uh to the storage tank. Surround. So that's what I still need to do. Uh, you need to surround it. Uh, surround it with mulch. Oh, the new, we're talking about the New Mexico yeah, locust. Yeah, why didn't you get this? Uh, but, but the New Mexico locust will not need to be watered after three or four years. Oh, that's good. Yeah, see. Yeah. Uh, that would be that, great. Whatever we get, I'm sure, for, its, for the first year or several years of its life, we will have to help it. And then, But then the idea is that they can kind of do on their own after that. Why didn't you get the PVC? Um, you know, I went oh, to Lowe's yeah. yesterday and I, he said it, they didn't have the size. Yeah. Needed. You guys around here that know Lowe's in Sierra Vista, um, Lowe's has a good selection of, of fittings for PVC, but it has a terrible selection of actual PVC pipe. Their biggest PVC pipe at Lowe's is two inch. So they don't have anything bigger than that. And I, the other reason I didn't, so I would have had to go to Home Depot, which is a few miles down the road. Um, and we also had gotten a load of mulch. So we were, we had only really planned on getting the gutters because I actually want to, uh, that's a good question. So you say, what size you're looking for? I don't know. I have to do a little research surprise, um, <laughs> on how big that PVC pipe should be to take a, all the water from the roof and be able to move it over to the, to the storage tank without backing up. I don't know how big that pipe needs to be. So I need to look into how big that needs to be. But I thought maybe two inches, you know, because I think when it comes out, the, the gutters are like five inches wide or something. That's pretty standard, I think. But but then when it drops out, you've got a couple of choices of how big the, the, the downspout that you drop them into. But uh, I need to do a calculation to make sure that I don't get too small of a PVC that uh, that won't handle the volume of the water coming off the roof. So that's one of the reasons I didn't get the, there's two reasons. So Lowe's doesn't really have a good selection of bigger PVC, which I think I might need bigger than two inches. And, uh, and I wasn't sure what size I needed yet. So those are the reasons. Are you still talking? Yes. I'm still talking. Are you talking to Tim or something? Uh, no, uh, Darla said that, um, 
she said she she wished we had well you know i were to always talk about time machine how oh, we, yeah. we wish we had a time machine. time machine and uh she said she wishes we had a time machine so we could fast forward to when our houses are built oh because she has a house being oh that's too. right yeah tell me about it um <laughs> So, yeah. Hong Kid Run 9, thank you for taking the time to answer all my Actually, questions. Absolutely. Nice. Enjoy your channel. Thumbs up. Thank you. Um, thank you. Jim, is it going directly into the tanks? Yeah, it'll go. So, right now we're talking about the carport. So, it'll come off the carport on the south side. And it kind of has to travel, let's say, along the, the, the edge of the carp. Uh, how do I say this? Away from the edge where it's being collected. It has to travel north along the side of the carport for maybe eight to 10 feet. And then it can run over about a, I'll say roughly 10 feet away is where the lid of the storage tank is. But yes, it's going directly to the storage tank, but there's a little bit of a run to get there. Nothing much longer than eight or 10 feet, I think. But uh, have you tried Benson I, Lumber at all? Uh, have you tried Benson Lumber? They have all that stuff. I don't, I've said this before. I don't, I don't look at, you know, I should, but I don't look at Benson Lumber often because their prices tend not to be great. Now, I look at Ace a little more because it's a little – another thing, Benson Lumber, I mean, hours-wise, I think – what was it, a Sunday recently? Yeah. They were closed. You know, Benson's a small town, so the hours at places aren't great. Oh, um, hi, hey, hi, Tom. Tom. Um, the hours at places aren't great. Benson Lumber doesn't have great hours. Um, there's probably some things, you know, at any place you can find decent deals from time to time. So I should include Benson Lumber in my search more often, but I'll admit that I don't just because generally the big box stores do a little better. I even <laughs> don't do as much as I should probably at Ace, but I've gotten a little better at that recently. Ace, surprisingly in Benson, Ace sometimes will have pretty close prices. So I have been using Ace more, but I haven't made much use of Benson Lumber. Don't worry, David. Um, he will take his time. Just, <laughs> there is no doubt about just that. Just one downspout. That's the plan. So this would be off of, you know, obviously for the for the house roof, it'll be it'll be a separate one. But yes, the the carport roof, which is nine hundred and change square feet, uh, maybe nine fifty. It's just Basically. under a thousand. Um, that one roof will have one downspout, and it will run into one of the tanks. Um, and the roof gutter, no, I'm sorry, the roof, the house gutter will have its own and its roof will be roughly the same. It'll be a similar square footage and it will come into its own tank. Even though those tanks are connected, one, you know, the, the house will empty into one of them. The carport will empty into another. So yes, just one downspout, one PVC run into a, into a storage tank. I don't know if Jim's asking so he can answer my question. Maybe he knows because Jim's done some gutter work. Maybe he knows the answer to my uh, how big of a pipe I need. He should be um, a pro at the gutter yeah, work. Yeah, Jim, now. how big of a pipe do I need <laughs> for a thousand square feet of roof? Um, uh, let's noises. see. Uh-oh. Is, is it fixing a... 73 and clear in New Jersey. That should be pretty nice, right? At, oh, wow. Ooh, it's about 10 o'clock, though, but that should be pretty nice. Uh, David... Edward Tolson. He'll be building my hacienda next. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, right. Yeah. The little hacienda. Yeah. That'll be. And by the time we get to that little hacienda, you're going to be. A I think ever. we'll be. Uh, I'm hoping that I will have learned enough from this build. And yeah, it would have been nice had we kind of done that the other way around so that it felt more comfortable at the house. I'm hoping that after the house, I'll feel a little more comfortable and maybe we'll be a little more. Let's say I'll be a little more willing to to kind of take some chances with the hacienda and do things a little differently and maybe a little more artistic. I'm willing to let Pam <laughs> kind of do whatever she wants with plaster on this thing, but when it comes to the walls and the structure of it, I'm trying to just stay pretty basic because I don't want to risk anything. But uh, maybe we'll be we'll have a little more fun with the with the uh, casita. We'll yes. see. Um, don't forget to hit thumbs up. Thanks everybody. Thanks, uh, Bill and Yvonne. Thanks. Uh, nice of them to do that surely. Yeah. So uh, that hacienda will be largely for Craig and Nikki and my mom. So <laughs> so Craig and Nikki might have a pretty good hand in building that one, actually. <laughs> so Jer Maybe Jared will come back mom, someday. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Sam, the, the um, baby, the baby Sam. Mom, uh, mom, if you want to come out and help build that one, you're welcome to, to uh, have your – you can get your hands dirty on that one to build your own bedroom. Um. 
By the way, once the walls start going up, you're going to hit 5,000 and 10,000 subs very quickly. Let's hope so. We are we are knocking on the door of five, but we've been pretty slow recently. But that's all right. Well, that's we're fine. trying to get to be more consistent. We're trying to be a little more consistent. I think I think the videos are decent. I hope they're decent. I don't know, but I don't think people are finding decent. them much. Decent. <laughs> Nobody else uh, will get oh, that. That was, that was funny though. Um, trailer park boy fans. Uh, you know, you guys are obviously these are the these are the true fans of our channel here. Obviously, that that uh, attend all, our all lives every week. Of, yeah. All seventeen of you are in rare <laughs> company. Um, feel free to suggest. You know, if you can think of something that we can do to to um, to make it more interesting. I, I think the videos recently. I think they've been pretty decent. I think the material's good. I think I think with Pam getting more involved, I think they've had a little more of a I, I still drone on sometimes when I teach stuff, but but uh, I think they've been fun. I uh, do have my, but hammock. they're not getting a ton of a ton of views. I think we just I don't know. We need people to find them. I still go over to the hammock and like shake it off, uh, shake oh, all yeah. the leaves off, and I'll get in it every now and then. And uh, it's it's gotten wet a few times, but then it dries back out. So I enjoy your videos. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Uh, what is <laughs> it like to have two? Nikki, that's a good one. <laughs> If anybody, so Nikki just made a funny joke. Um, <laughs> what's it like to have two trees that close together? Uh, everybody Google Nate Bergazzi sometime if you want to laugh. Uh, Nate oh, Bergazzi yeah. is a comedian. And he does a pretty good bit on hammocks. It's he talks funny. about... Actually, if you probably Googled Nate Bergazzi and hammock, it, it, you'd probably get a maybe a little five-minute clip. That's It's worth watching. It's pretty good Talk stuff. Talk about how you have damage everywhere. Uh, uh, we have been doing oh, a new show. Jim, that was Jim's last video, right? Uh, Damage everywhere. <laughs> it seems to work well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll bet. Uh, more gallons. Gabby Craig couldn't Morgan. make it. Craig's at the land? Oh, well, I guess. What? Okay, so so you guys oh. just got back, but I guess he could head down there. Yeah. Yeah, when's Craig? Oh, gonna... I didn't realize he was down at the land. Why isn't All Craig right. making videos while he's... Oh, he should be. Oh, he should be. Yeah. And he should have filmed when he when he get, opened that. Um, oh, so Craig's down at the land. Is that. he staying overnight by himself? Uh, let's see. That Did we miss anything? Scary. 15K if Pam runs around bales whacking rattlesnakes with brooms while laughing. That'll, <laughs> that'll be a good one. Wait, maybe um, we can do that one soon. That, that'd be a good one. Uh, we should probably wrap up. Huh? It's getting dark uh, in here. Oh, my gosh. It's 7 o'clock. Sorry. That, man, that flew by. I, I looked a little while ago. It was 6.30. I was like, oh, we still got a little while that we can talk. And then the, the half hour flew by. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So everybody's homework is Google Nate Bergazzi and Hammock. And Trailer Park Boys. That's a good one. And watch Trailer Park bubbles. Boys. Oh, my gosh. Wait. Pam just did a really good Bubbles there. That was pretty good. This is Bubbles. He's got, got an underbite. And big, big glass. Decent. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was, that was, that was, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Brian... Uh, Brian's been wearing uh, my reading glasses lately. He's finally to the age where he's. Will you be using you know, some? So. Will you be using spray foam in your build? We will, we will uh, definitely in yeah. the ceiling uh, for for our insulation. And we've talked about it. Um, I think there's a good chance that we're going to use it in some of our uh, in some of the uh, uh, window Windows. buck areas because it's just hard to get a bale. It's hard to get a bale positioned in there, and you definitely can't really uh, compress a bale for it to really be any sort of Dude. load bearing or anything. So really, it's just going to be fill. Um, I still haven't decided whether that'll be uh, whether we'll try and work bales into that for insulation, or if it'll be some sort of spray foam or something else. But we definitely will probably have spray foam in the ceiling, but we might use it in a couple of other did. places as well. <laughs> Dude, Dude. Said. Dude, Dude, Dude. Says. I got to see one of their live shows in PA. We did a live show in PA? No, <laughs> no the trailer park we boys could. did. Oh, oh, good They one. do live shows. Oh, I also have a picture of me reading. and Bubbles. Awesome. They're uh, pretty fun. We just found them <laughs> recently. I don't know why it took me so long to find that show, but it, we're, uh, oh, we're watching a lot of My son park boys told right it because I used to live funny. in trailer parks as, kid, as a kid. It's funny. I was brought up in all kinds of trailers. What's that say? T TPB, Trailer Park Boys. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we watch it every day. I guess, I'm sorry, we, we're we uh, we're over yeah, seven. Gonna, I guess we'll wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, be, for coming again. We're going to be in the dark um, zone. It was an interesting week. The weather messed with us a lot, and I'm sure that's going to happen here going forward. So we're going to try and be 
nimble and try and jump around to maybe some different tasks. Um, I don't really want to put the whole bale and house build on hold. I don't want to do that. I'm going to try and press forward, but I also don't want anything to get ruined. So we're going to be careful about it. Um, so if we can kind of do some other tasks, I think we might do some of that. So it makes sense to do some water stuff now. So maybe next month won't rain as much. Maybe. We'll see. Hopefully not. Um, but uh, everybody stay safe out there. Have fun. Thanks stay for watching. Uh, jump in there and, and comment and give us any suggestions you might have. Thank you. Um, Thanks, tell your everybody. friends. <laughs> we'll, uh, tell all your friends. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Bye, Bye. everybody. Price is out. <laughs>